So today's video is going to be a part of the self-publishing journey series and today I'm going to be talking about formatting and book length. In theory this should be a pretty short video um, just kind of going over the basics, going over what, why I made the decisions that I made regarding um, the length of the book and the way the book is formatted. Um, so when you see chat books a lot you see them either split up into actual chapters hence like chap book, the name chap book, um, or you see them like split into sections. Um, the books that I always reference are um, Date and Time by Phil K because his is split into past, present, and future I believe um, for that book as far as like poems regarding those points in his life, past, present, and future. Um, and then I think Rudy Francisco um, has his book into sections I believe. Um, and then I think Amanda Lovelace, all of her books are always in some kind of um, like subcategories or something as well. So I knew I wanted to do that, but not necessarily in a chronological way. I'm also pretty sure in my actual like self-publishing um, journey video, um, follows the whole process from start to finish and the behind the scenes stuff. I'm pretty sure I discussed this in that video, um, but basically um, I knew I wanted the separate poems to kind of be categorized in some way but I didn't want to bunch all of the poems that dealt with the same topics together um like all the love poems together all the family poems together all the depression poems together all the happy poems together I knew I didn't want to bunch them together like that and my reasoning for doing that is because in real life life isn't like bunched together like that you don't have like all of your good moments here and all of your bad moments there at least hopefully not um it kind of goes with the ups and flows of life and things are like not sequential like that so i wanted the book to really reflect that and be just as authentic to real life um so that's why i chose to not go that route i still considered breaking it up into sections um but i wasn't sure how to do that correctly or like to my satisfaction and the reason i wanted to do that is because it would allow me to put the poems in a random order but still allow me to um like have the category indicated. I just put a table, um, after the table of contents, there's an additional table that categorizes the poems, even though they're not necessarily in that order. And I'm happy with the way that I did that. Diving more into actual formatting, as far as using KDP with Amazon, it's actually super easy. Um, not lying when I say that. I used Scrivener, or Scrivener, Scrivener, um, for my, um, book writing and book formatting started a new chapter um for each poem so like even if a poem was longer than one page it wouldn't run it into another one um and then in Scrivener it does allow you to um format your book for pdf and for um like you can say you're formatting it for a book and choose the size of the book and go forward from there so this is what Scrivener looks like in the beginning. Um, you have all of your tabs here, a copyright page, thank you page, title page, table of contents. Um, I did insert a blank page um, right here with this code, which prints an automatic blank page in between whatever you want to break up. And that was so that my stuff didn't run into the first poem. Then you're gonna go to file, export. No, um, you're gonna go to, <laughs> Um, give me one second, guys. You're going to go to File. <laughs> um, you're going to go to Compile. File and then Compile. That rhymes. You want to make sure that all your stuff is already in order the way you want it, because after this, it, you, it's not edit, it's not able to edit it. So File, then Compile. And then this is already pre-saved when I did last time, but all of your stuff should be over here. Check marks for all of the things that you want included in the final um, document. PDF is what I used. Um, anything you don't want included, obviously uncheck or delete from the original file. I chose the paperback 6x9 copy. Um, there's other formats down there, proof copy, modern, whatever. Um, make it for PDF, that's what I did, because that's what um, KDP requests is a PDF file. Um, if you go back into here a little bit more, I don't want to confuse you guys too much, but you can edit the text layout um, separators if you want like page breaks with like a little squiggly design. If you want a page number at the top or the bottom of your page, 
um, footnotes, um, where you want your actual numbers of your pages to start. Obviously, you don't want the page numbers to start on the table of contents. You want them to start on the page that your actual um, poems start on. So just be aware of that. Um, you can always copy as many copies as you want and save the PDF and go through it. And then you'll kind of see um, what you did wrong or what needs to be fixed. I didn't mess with these too much because I wasn't really sure what they did. When I played around with them before, I couldn't really see what changes it actually made. Um, I'm sure in the future I'll play around with it a little bit more and you guys might be more tech savvy than me in other areas and play around with them. But I didn't mess with any of these settings, but they are all here for um, customization purposes. So then just do... You do, I did have to do a lot of Googling. Um, so I did add obviously like my thank you page, my title page, my copyright page. Um, and then you want to insert like a blank page in between. So I had the table of contents, then like the table with the poem categories. And then I had a blank page so that my first page of actual poetry would begin on the right hand side and there wouldn't be anything next to it. That's what I used to insert the blank page into the document. And then you just go onto KDP, you upload it, you go to like upload manuscript or whatever, and you put that in KDP, it saves it, you're allowed to preview it and change as many times as you want. I obviously um, previewed my document in PDF form before I uploaded it to KDP. But of course, when you get it in KDP, you will notice other errors, especially if you're doing your own editing and your own formatting. Um, your eyes will kind of glaze over little errors here and there and you won't catch them till a little bit later. I think I printed like three different rounds of drafts of my book, like test copies, and had them mailed to myself and I still had a few typos and errors in my book when it actually went to print just because I didn't catch all of them. And that's only because I was doing my own editing because I didn't pay someone to do my editing for me. Um, if you guys are going to be paying someone to do your editing, you obviously shouldn't run into that problem because that person's getting paid to make sure that doesn't happen. As far as length is concerned, um, I was do I didn't do a lot of research on length beforehand. I kind of just googled like, hey, like what's a good length for a poetry book, for a chapbook? Um, and I got like various responses. Usually it says um, close to 100 pages, um, definitely not like too super thick. I didn't start realizing until afterwards um, when I put my book on Amazon and started selling it on Amazon. That's when I started like looking at what the price of other people's books were. Like I checked out um, Madison Coon's book and um, Courtney Pepperdine's book and Ruby Carrar, and I realized that the price that they had set for their book um, was very close to the price that I had set for mine initially, but they had much more page pages than I did. So like when I first launched, I think I did my book at like. 9.99 or something i could be wrong about that and i realized that there were other people selling their books for like 8.99 but they had 200 pages and i was like my book only has 60 something pages so it wouldn't be fair for me to sell my book for more money than someone that has like three times the amount of pages that i do so that's why i ended up editing that so you definitely want to take that into consideration obviously it's your work and you can choose how much you want to price it for especially if the content is more dense um, but because a lot of my poems are short poems, and of course it's less than 100 pages, um, I had to really like kind of like decide with myself, like, do I want to upsell this book? When people can clearly see that there are other books priced for the same price or cheaper with much more content, you know? And you can play around with pricing. I'll make another video about that. I think it'll probably be a very short video, honestly. So that's why I wanted to cover it here because I may not get around to making a full length video about it anytime soon unless you guys have particular questions. I took about like 200 poems and narrowed it down to maybe like less than 50 poems. So that's what I had to work with. So it obviously affected the book length. I could have postponed the book and tried to add more content and come up with new fresh poems to add just to make it longer. But I wanted um, I wanted the, the like compilation of the poems that are included to be very naturally um, related to each other. I didn't want to try to force more content to fit inside of a certain box of the book title or the book theme. So I didn't do that. But the book cover was much harder, I should say. I had to play around with that multiple times. When you order the like fake test copies, they don't really care about bleed lines and things like that. But then when you go back to do the real book, that's when they start like saying like, hey, you need to edit this because this is not trimmed correctly. So I had to save at least like 10 different copies of my book cover 
so I got it to fit perfectly within the lines of the front and back cover with my book image. There's like a certain cutoff point, so I clearly didn't want any white space to be showing on the front page because it would just look like the photo just like randomly ended or was cropped weird. So I had to make sure that I shrug the image over just enough that it went over the margins, um, but not too much that it was like bleeding onto the back page or even bleeding onto the spine of the book either. Um, so that, that's where it got the most tricky. I'm not even gonna lie about that. Um, I would probably pay someone to do that for me next time because it was really frustrating. I just had to keep cropping and dragging and resizing until I got it as close to perfect as possible and it's still not perfect if I'm being totally honest. And I didn't do anything fancy. I know some people do like the falling text or the weird spacing. Um, some people do all lowercase. Um, I didn't include graphics in the text of my book, only graphics in the book cover. There wasn't any artwork inside the book. I'm sure that would have made things more difficult or at least like more tricky to figure out. Um, again, like I said, I did this all by myself, so I figured it was important to like kind of include the perspective of the poet actually being the one doing it. I had complete like creative freedom as far as what I wanted to do and not do. Um, I tried to keep it like as clean cut as possible. I will say Scrivener does not have a way, at least it's not as far as I know, Scrivener does not have a way to um, like mass change all the text on all the pages at once, which was kind of annoying. So I did have to go through like make sure and double check each text for each poem was exactly the same. Um, and if you're copy and pasting from a different Word document or for, from Google Docs or whatever into Scrivener, that gets a little wonky and it's very frustrating. You actually are better off just retyping it because when you copy and paste it, um, you can't edit certain like line spacing and things like that. Um, if you start your paragraph two tabs down and then you copy and paste it and then you want to change the spacing, the spacing is going to be super wonky. I don't know why that is. Um, so I learned the hard way. I ended up just like saying forget it. I'm not going to copy paste these things. I'm just going to retype each one, which honestly helped me like in the editing process and helped me with like checking for grammar and things like that. Um, but that was a little um, tedious to do if I'm being honest. Um, so if you guys have any, have any other questions that I'm forgetting or that you think I should have gone like more in detail on, please let me know and I'll just happily make a part two video. I figured this would be one of the shorter versions from the self-publishing series because it is pretty straightforward and I figure a lot of you will probably be paying someone to do one or both of these things for you. That pretty much sums it up. My book wasn't super long so there wasn't a lot to be done.